Hey nerds, today we're going to be continuing our search for the most obscure piece of Magic the Gathering trivia. If you have any trivia you would like to suggest for a future video just like this one, please let me know down in the comments, and like the video if you like it, and subscribe if you haven't already. With all that out of the way, let's continue our search for the most obscure Magic trivia. We're going to start off today with looking at some Easter eggs in Magic the Gathering art. One of the most well-known examples of this is from the art of Goblin Grenade by Ron Spencer. In his art for the Fallen Empires version of the card, hidden in the spikes, is the name Mike, which I think is really cool. We're going to follow that up with one of the silliest stories in Magic, the Uktabis. Uktabi Orangutan was originally printed in the Vision set, and it's a 3-mana 2-2 that destroys an artifact on Enter the Battlefield. But what's going on in the background? Well, that's some very not-safe-for-magic content, I'll tell you that. Apparently, Uktabi Orangutan destroyed a contraceptive when it entered the battlefield because in Unhinged, we got a direct reference to this art and card with the card Uktabi Kong. Not only does it show in the background one of the monkeys got pregnant from the uh, previous card, but the card itself lets you tap two ape creatures to make an ape token, which is hilarious flavor for the ability. Finally, in Jumpstart 2022, we got Kibo Uktabi Prince, which is clearly the baby born from the two yellow monkeys as they are still in Kibo's art. The artifact destruction ability is again referenced and really this whole series of cards just feels like a really cool in-joke that was displayed over the course of 20 years. Great references. Though the card that has the most easter eggs in a single piece of art has to be Triskaidekaphobia, a card that plays on the fear of the number 13. I count 12 instances of the number 13 on this card. There are 13 boards in the ceiling, there are 13 boards on the wall, there are 13 blood drips, 13 pieces of cutlery above the fireplace, and 13 stones making up the fireplace front and the side of the fireplace as well. There are 13 stones forming the frame of the fireplace and 13 logs in the fireplace. There are 13 pieces of shattered plate, and there are 13 rivets on the barrel. And lastly, there are 13 word for each option's word in the ability. That's a total of 12 instances of 13 on this card, and I could not find the last one. If you can, and if you know what it is, please let me know down in the comments below. I looked way longer than I care to admit trying to find the 13th, 13th Okay, so now thing. we're going to move on from card art and talk a little bit about card legality, specifically new Phyrexia. War of Attrition Precon. This is a really cool piece of magic trivia. Going back 13 years, yes, you now feel old, back in 2011, we got this article. Now, this was back when banning cards in Standard was a rare thing and was met with explanations and apologies from Wizards of the Coast. And in fact, the previous bannings in Standard before this one were back in 2005. This ban announcement made both Jace the Mind Sculptor and Stoneforge Mystic banned in the standard format, kind of. See, Stoneforge Mystic was printed in the War of Attrition pre-con as a two of. So the ruling was that you could not play Stoneforge Mystic in standard unless you were running specifically the deck list from the pre-con. Any changes to the deck list would make the deck illegal to play in the format. The pre-con was released 10 days prior to this ban announcement, and it would look really bad to have an unplayable out-of-the-box deck little more than a week after it was released. So Wizards decided to just let people play it out of the box and only out of the box. I'll link the article below if you're interested. I think this is one of the weirdest bandings in Magic history and a very fun Magic the Gathering fact. Except we're going to be looking at some Magic the Gathering online promos. Before MTG Arena, playing Magic the Gathering Online used to involve MitGo. MitGo is still running and it's an archaic form of playing the game online, but it does also feature multiplayer play as well as unique formats to the program, so that's kinda cool. For MitGo, we received Gleemox. Gleemox is a zero mana artifact that you can tap for one mana of any color. So like a mox, but for any color. And it says right on the card, it's straight up banned in everything. The story behind this one is pretty short. Once upon a time, Wizards of the Coast wanted to make a social media site called Gleemax, and the project was eventually scrapped. But when it was in development, you could actually log on to MTGO and receive one of these promo Gleemox cards. 
The flavor behind Gleemax, as seen on the card, is that it's a big brain in a jar, and the artwork for Gleemox references this really well. If you are interested in the history of the Gleemax project, let me know down below. It'd be interesting to make a video on the topic. MTGO received one other promo card, sort of. It's called Library of Congress. This really isn't a promo card, but more of a debugging tool used by developers that was found online. Essentially, it can do everything from drawing cards to nuking opponents for 20. It's made to set up a game state so that developers can test specific instances and occurrences in the game. I read online that it's a Vanguard card now and it's no longer implemented, but it's really hard to track down information on this one, so I can't confirm. Next, I want to show you the artwork for Acroma Vision of Ixidor. What is going on with her legs? I wanted to tackle the case of Acroma's legs, because they have an interesting story. In almost every art of Acroma, it simply does not show her legs. They're either obscured by some fabric, or they're just out of frame. Acroma is a fan favorite character from the Onslaught block, and she was an angel that was created from Ixidor. Brave history, essentially Ixidor could dream things into reality, so one day he woke up missing an arm and had a Chroma, a giant battle angel who looked like his dead wife, just standing there. Old magic lore was super cool. Anyways, a Chroma was created with normal angel legs, but after a battle with Phage the Untouchable and the Cabal, she lost her legs. So Ixidor decided to summon a Jaguar, immediately kill it, and then kind of just imagine a Chroma healed. And the result of doing all that? A Chroma the Angel was healed with jaguar legs. No card or promo art that I found shows her directly having the jaguar legs, and I thought that was quite strange. But that's not the end for Acroma's legs, no no. After a battle in which Ixidor is eaten by a death worm that Phage threw up, Acroma has to go inside it to rescue him, and her jaguar legs just melt off. Not kidding, Acroma has protection from black and red, but her kitty legs did not, so they melted off. Later on, her followers replaced her legs with lances, which looks super cool. That's how we get this version of Acroma, Vision of Ixidor. And this is the only depiction of Acroma with her metal stabby lance legs. As I said before, old magic lore is wonderfully weird. I'm not as... Alright guys, that's it for today. If you have any Magic Gathering facts you'd like to see in a video just like this one, please leave a comment down below. And if you liked the video, please like it and subscribe if you haven't already. It would really help out the channel. Alright, thanks nerds.